بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله the question was asked I understand giving da'wah but is it sharing a platform with ahl bid'ah or ahl kufr from the minhaj of the salaf that's what I think others tried to ask you when they brought up their working with Ahl Bid'ah. Would you try to make a video response to, is this making Salafia, the safe sect, distinct in Aqidah and Minhaj? So I believe the question <clears throat> was in, per, in relevance or related to um, a past discussion about giving da'wah to Ahl bidah <coughs> and sitting at the table of Ahl bidah <coughs> and so on and so forth. And some of these Messiah, as I've asked several of the ulama regarding these issues in accordance with the Qawaid Fiddin that they are built upon the harms and the benefits. Meaning if there is a greater benefit <clears throat> by sitting and visiting a masjid, for example, of Ahl Bidah, uh, that is clearly a masjid of Ahl Bidah, by the way, then if there is a greater Sharia benefit, meaning you're going to advance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen more, there is benefit, there is khair, in that more than the harm that comes from being away from that then of course you take the uh, you go with the uh, musaleh you go with the khair and that which is good and there are many many issues that this uh, that surround this issue and I wanted to use this time to go a little bit in depth from some of the statements of some of the contemporary imams of this time, Rahimahumullah, Wahafadahumullah. But first, we need to establish, as the questioner was mentioning, that the Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, the Minhaj of the Salaf, the Asl of that, is that the Salaf, <coughs> they refuted Ahl Bid'ah, they did not sit with Ahl Bid'ah even to the extent some of them they would not uh, follow the janazah of a clear muqtadiyah and many other ahkam uh, that they were far away from being with the people of innovation why they did this in order to preserve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and they did this from the bab of amr bi ma'ruf and nahi al-munkar of commanding the good and forbidding the evil because it is evil to be quiet about bidah and kufr and shirk and not address it in some form or matter and not to give precedence to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and clarifying the truth and just one statement out of literally thousands we have uh, books around me that have literally thousands of statements that you could spend months reading the, <clears throat> in fact, years of the collection of statements of the Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, uh, refuting and being away from Ahl bidah and the position of the Salaf. But I just want to read one statement of Imam <clears throat> Abu Uthman Ismail ibn Abdurrahman al-Sabuni <laughs> Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah and he was talking about the madhab of the Salaf and the madhab of Ahl Hadith around this issue and he said that they وَيَبْغَضُونَ أَهْلَ الْبِدَعَ أَلَّذِينَ أَهْدَثُوا فِي دِينَ مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ وَلَا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ وَلَا يَسْحَبُونَهُمْ وَلَا يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَهُمْ وَلَا يُجَالِسُهُمْ وَلَا يُجَادِلُهُمْ so he mentions that from the usul of Ahl Sunnah and that Ahl Sunnah, the madhab of the Salaf al and Ahl Hadith, 
can be contained in the statement, and this comes from really the collection of thousands and thousands of statements of the Salaf about these issues. He said that they hated or detested the people of innovation and desires, those who innovated in the religion, that which was not from it. And he said, and they didn't love them, they didn't make them as their companions, they didn't listen to them, they didn't sit with them, they did not debate with them about the religion, and they did not have uh, really what means debate or arguments with them, <clears throat> nor did they uh, believe in even listening to their, their falsehood, that they would rather plug their ears than listen to their falsehood, and there are countless statements of the Salaf which illustrate this Qaida. So that is the Asul of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. But I think where you have issues, especially in this contemporary times, is not regarding the Asul of Ahl Sunnah, but it's how to practice and implement those principles and who we implement those principles with. And if you look to the books of the Mutaqaddimin, of the early scholars, the classical scholars, you'll find that in many of our contemporary scholars, through their Peru, through their intense study, for example, Imam uh, Rabi bin Hadi al madkhali wa Kathir wa Kathir, Imam Fawzan, Imam Abdul Masar al Abad, wa Qablihim, wa A'dham minhim, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Imam al Albani, Imam bin Baz, Imam bin Uthaymin, wa others that all these great Imams have spent years growing their beards in gray and in great lengths studying the Madhab of the Salaf and dispensing it or making intishar or spreading the call to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and you'll find from their speech that they mention that these issues on how you deal with the Mukhalifin and people from Ahl Bid'ah, those people who differ and those people who are from the people of innovation, that it differs from time and place. You have to. And that we know from those texts, from the way the Salaf operated. We understand this from the book and the Sunnah, and we understand this from reality and experience. That time is different. Times are different. Okay? 20 years ago is different than now. Some of the issues that we face the environment in certain places, the sunnah is widespread. And before it might have been a place of bid'ah where you would have been killed if you would have tried to implement some of those principles. But now you may be able to practice some of those principles. And depending on the strength of Ahl Sunnah, as far as making hajr, and as far as the looking at the masala and the mufasid, the harms and the benefit, all of these come into play. But what about, let's get back on the issue and the topic, the brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in him, he said, sharing the platform with Ahl Bid'ah and Ahl Kufr. And I believe in general, what I try to emphasize in general is the importance, of course, of going back to the method of the Salaf and that you have fiqh and understanding and how to implement those things. Because the Prophet said, May yira the law will be khayr if I deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives a fiqh, for, fiqh in the religion, understanding in the religion. And that's why it takes fiqh to practice these these kawai. And what we have seen from many, not some, but many of our brothers and sisters is a lack of fiqh, fiddin, in that the way they have treated other Muslims and the way they have treated their brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnah is unbefitting for Ahl Sunnah. That what is problematic is people take those narrations of the Salaf, they take them out of context and they take them and implement them with Ahl Sunnah and when there is no benefit in it. And for example, this is why now you see a lot, in a lot of places around the world, you see folda, you see chaos amongst Ahl Sunnah because there is so many, yesterday so-and-so was your sheikh, but today you are speaking so, you have belittled him and cursed him and speak so many ill statements about him, it's, it's shameful. What, he was a lama, but now he is a mubtadiyah and a spreader of fitan and chaos to you. And it just happens in a, the turn of a, the flipping of a coin. 
this is not from Ahl Sunnah. This is not the minhaj of the Salaf al Saleh. Ridwan Allahi alayhim, and we're going to make bayan of that from the kalam of the ulama. The second point I want to mention with regards to that is yes, is making tatbik of those Messiah. This is where you have issue, this is where we have issue, in that some brothers and sisters they consider anyone who disagrees with them to be a mubtadiya. This is hisbiya. So they are either hisbis themselves or they have fallen into hisbis and they have this sin and they have this crime and they have this hisbiya and ta'asab and blind following with them. And they make taqlid of certain scholars and taqlid of other people to where they criticize and attack the honor of their Muslim brothers without the right to do so. So this is what's very important because a lot of times you see, for example, you'll see a Talib al and whose usul, his foundation is from Ahl Sunnah. But yet they'll say, oh, we saw him sitting with Ahl Bidah. We saw him giving da'wah to the non-Muslims. Well, who else is he supposed to give da'wah to? The Prophet Muhammad, salawatu rabbi, wa salamu alayhi, give da'wah to the mushrikeen. What are you gonna say about that? The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said me, said, that yahdi Allahu that you give that one person is guided by your hand is better than you, better for you than the red camels. So it's very important to know how to practice these things. And so my general advice before we get into the statements of the ulama is leave these things. Generally, the general Muslims just focus on working on your heart, focus on working on your deed. Focus on woke, uh, coming closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, and, and leave these matters of tibdi and quick and getting so confused. This minute, these ones are Sa'afika, these are Musa'afika, these are one this and this one is this. Let's talk about this machine. This Sheikh, Sheikh who you, you took and you love, you used to make ta'deem, you used to say he was an alam, but now you speak to him like he's a dog. This is horrendous. And this is not from Ahl Sunnah, and I advise you, O oh youth, to avoid this foolishness and this ignorance. They're fooling you. They're calling you to the hellfire in confusion. Because either they're calling you to good or they're calling you to evil. And that's not what we see from the major mountains of knowledge that lived in our time, that live in our time, and some of them who lived before. And so that's what the crux of what we're gonna get into. Now first we'll begin with some statements of Imam al-Bani about in, uh, in indulging in these matters. Imam al-Albani was asked, is it allowed to cooperate with a man of the Ashiri Aqidah? Not someone who is the same Aqidah as you, but you see them sitting with Ahl Bidah, but he said the Ashiri Aqidah. In the way of calling to Allah, that means Dawah, with the justification that this difference in Aqidah does not lead to vice, rather not cooperating with him with him could lead to splitting apart the efforts of the Muslimin. Looking at the look at this, looking at the harms and the benefits of these issues. The great Imam Al Albani, Rahmatullah said, if the cooperating with the likes of this man does not lead to cooperating with him in being negligent with his Aqidah, then this is from what is allowed, without doubt, the Imam said. Rather, I believe that the Mu'min of the mu'min of strong iman that it is in his religious benefit to cooperate with the other muslimin who have deviated from the aqidah of salafia due to a reason among the old and recent reasons what is of more priority regarding the salafi mu'min is to cooperate with those people because he will find the appropriate opportunity to convey the dawah salafia to him and that which took place, and we know this from experience, is that those who oppose the Salafi Aqidah will take either of two positions with the righteous Salafi movement. Either they answer his dawah, so they incline towards accepting the Salafi Madhab and moving away from their Khalafi Madhab, and this has taken place many times, or they reject his Madhab and reject dealing with him, rather the matter returns to him and not to them. Ahabatifillah. That is a powerful statement. I want you to go back and listen again. That Imam al-Albani is showing us, and this is the fiqh of that great Imam, Rahmatullah So don't close the door. Yes, some of our ulama close the door, and that's okay. I believe it's most correct what Imam al-Albani is saying that it is built on the harms and benefit. 
I asked Sheikh Suleiman Rahili the same thing, he told me the same thing. I asked Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi the same thing, he told me the same thing, basically. I asked Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al aqil the same thing, he told me the same thing. I asked Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili the same thing, he told me the same thing. I asked my Sheikh Sheikh Saeed bin Hulayl in Hail the same thing, he told me the same thing. And Sheikh Abdullah Obeyland in Hail he told me the same thing. Well, other than them. And this shows the Habit that this is a strong position. Yes, some of our other Imams, uh, Mashaykh, they say, no, don't go to Ahl Bidah and all, you're going to make their numbers big and stuff. And Sheikh Suleiman, and each of them, they have their own details regarding this issue. But it's very important that we pay attention to some of these uh, statements of the ulama. So then the question comes up, Habit what necessitates a person leaving Salafiyah? So I want to address some other issues that are side issues because the problem is, is people declare others to be innovators, then they see a da'i of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to them and then they assume he's an innovator or they put him, link him with the innovators or they say he's sitting with Ahl al-Kufr or Ahl al-Bidah or whatever the case may be. And again, we just heard the kalam of Imam al-Albani which shows us that these issues are not black and white. And these issues that you have to look at the harms and the benefits of going to those places. That is, if it is even sure that that person is an innovator or that masjid is full of innovators or whatever the case may be. So here's one of the statements we need to be aware of. Is taking someone off the minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is a serious thing. Imam al Albani was asked about the issue of takfir and so forth. He says, Because we consider he who leaves Islam in one aspect, this does not allow us to exclude him from the circle of Islam absolutely. Meaning, someone fell into kufr, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a disbeliever. Rather, he is in this aspect excluded from the judgment of Al Islam. And similarly, if we were to talk about the Salafi Minhaj and the Dawah to Salafiyya, if it were confirmed that a person left the Minhaj of the Salaf Asali in one issue, we do not judge him as having left the circle of the Salaf. However, we say in this issue he opposed the Salaf. As we said previously that he who opposes Al-Islam in an issue has opposed Al-Islam. However, we do not exclude him in both cases uh, from the circle of Islam or from the circle of Salafiyya. That shows us a habit of Allah that we should not be quick to make take people off the sunnah and quick to make takfir of people. And this is the crime that we see in this day and age is we see so many youth and we even see seasoned people who are supposed to be students of knowledge and we even see ulama, especially younger ones, who follow this minhaj of making quick takfir of people. But if only if they were to listen to their elders, those who preceded them, who have much greater fadl and much greater knowledge and fiqh and understanding of the religion than they do, then they would have been of those uh, benefiting and the dawah would be stronger, not getting weaker, but just more in numbers. And Imam al-Labani was also asked about this issue about leaving Salafiyya, he said, a man whose usul is that of Ahl Sunnah, and he walks upon its minhaj, and he is known for his defense of it, and his service to it, and sometimes he makes some mistakes in his minhaj. So he is warned against by name, uh, is he warned against by name or by making clear his mistakes? This was the question asked the Imam al-Albani. Imam al-Albani said, the second and not the first, meaning that the man, his mistakes are warned against. But we're not quick to take him off the da'wah to Salafiyya and say he's not from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah because this is a person who's a soul, is from Ahl Sunnah. But yet, maybe they made a mistake. Maybe they did sit with Ahl Bidah too much. You saw them in a video and they were having tea with Ahl Bidah or taking a selfie with Ahl Bidah or whatever the case may be. But don't be quick. You're wasting your time and you're destroying the da'wah. Why? Who's going to be left to teach you? Because all of us make mistakes. Muhammad ibn Abdullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Adam All the children of Adam, they sin. And the best of those sinners is those who repent. So know that we all make mistakes. All of us in our dawah, all of us in many affairs, and we ask Allah to forgive us, I mean. 
Imam al Albani was also asked about this issue about taking an alam from Ahl Sunnah. He said, as for what I hear now from this question concerning how a Muslim is removed from the Jama'ah or the Jama'ah Salafiyah because he made a mistake in an issue or another, then I do not see that this can be anything but an infection from the other Ahzab. So this is something from the Hizbis. So why is it some people claim Salafiyah the loudest? They're the loudest claimers of Salafiyah. And then they're the first one to fall into Hizbiya and destroy the Dawah. Every time a Dawah effort comes up from people who assume us from Ahl Sunnah, they're the first one to say, look, so-and-so did this. So-and-so we saw him do this. So-and-so sitting with Ahl Bidah. So-and-so this. He's a Mubtidiyah. He's Ahmad. He's this. He's this. And cursing them and taking them off the Sunnah and destroying the Dawah. Why is that? Because it's Hizbiya. Imam al-Albani, Rahmatullahi Rahmatullahi said, as for what we hear now from this question concerning how a Muslim is removed from the Jama'ah or Jama'at Salafiyah because he made a mistake in an issue or other, then I do not see that this can be anything but an infection from the other Ahzab. This removal uh, of, uh, of a Salafi from, uh, from a Salafiyah due to a mistake he made is from the practice of some of the Islamic Ahzab which do not take up the Salafi Minhaj as the Minhaj in Fiqh or in understanding of Islam, rather a Hizb predominate in it is what is predominant in the other Ahzab. Uh, things like gathering upon the basis of a small state. He who leaves the obedience of his leader is warned once and twice and a third time perhaps. Then he is judged with his removal. The likes of this is not allowed to be taken up by a group that belongs truly to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj of the Salaf, Salaf as -Saleh. Is that not sufficient? Is that not sufficient to know and understand we should not be quick to uh, take people off the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that's the madhab of the uh, the Hizbiyun and when it comes to making tabdeel of people and scholars do we have to follow everyone's statement because so many people run around it's the new call to say Ali Hassan invented such and such principle about not forcing the people. How many Imams before Imam Imam al Albani says it? Imam <coughs> Fozan, Kathir, 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 Mina Aimma say that you can't force people. And it only goes from logic after we look at the Nasus, after we look at the method of the Salaf, and we look at logic. You cannot say that Sheikh so and so made Tibdi of him, we all have to follow. And if we don't follow, we are Mubtadiyah, or we're supporting Bidah, or we're being weak in our Dawah. It's false. Imam al-Albani was asked about this issue and he said, it is not a condition ever that he who declares a person to be a kafir and establish against him the evidence that all the people should be with him in his takfir of that person because it could be that he, the one who made takfir to the other person, has interpreted it so. While another alam sees that it is not allowed to make takfir of that person and the same applies with tafsiq and tabdiq, calling someone an innovator. So this, in reality, is of the fitten of the current times, along with how the young ones hasten to make allegations against an alum, the point being that this is a sequential occurrence of an alum calling someone a kafir, fasik, muqtadi' and everyone following him in that ruling, and making it binding to follow that alum in his ruling, ruling is not binding ever. That's a powerful statement, Imam al-Bani. So why don't you criticize Imam al-Bani for saying this statement now? It shows that there's no... Either there are people who are deliberately lying, or they have some ignorance and they don't know, or they are just people of fitan. You can't force people to take your view. But the view and the haq is what distinguishes the da'wah to Ahl sunnah that we call to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And so I'll end this advice With some statements of these great Imams And we'll uh, Imam Al-Albani said about Being excessive in, in indulging these issues Of takfir He said I advise you and the other young ones Who have stood upon a devi deviated path As it appears to us Wallahu alam, To not waste your time in criticizing each other and to say so-and-so said this, and so-and-so said that. Because firstly, this has nothing to do with ilm and knowledge. And secondly, this is this manner burns the chests 
and it allows for malice and hatred to enter the heart. Rather, what is upon you is knowledge, for it is knowledge that will reveal. Is this speech in praise of Zaid, who has a lot of mistakes, correct or not? And is it our right, for example, to refer to him as a man of innovations? And follow from this, is he a muqtedia? We do not get deeply involved in these issues. I advise not to not be deeply involved in these issues in such a deep way because we in reality complain now about this division that has occurred amongst those who attribute themselves to the Tao of the book and the Sunnah or as we say to the Tao of Salafia the main reason for this division Wallahu Alam is the person's self that calls him to evil and it is not actually disagreements over some of the opinions this is my advice Imam al-Albani gave you fantastic advice so follow it Here's what Imam uh, Fozan mentions about the youth getting involved in these issues and, and busying themselves and destroying the da'wah. Imam Fozan was also asked, and he said, Allah has not burdened you with making tabdi' of the people and to judge them as being innovators. Allah has not burdened you with this. Seeking knowledge, seek knowledge now. If you seek knowledge, you will know the innovation and the innovator. As for you setting loose your tongue on everyone who opposes you and everyone who does something, you criticize him and say he is an innovator. This returns to you as a sin. This returns to you as a sin. What is obligatory is that the person holds his tongue from these issues and seeks knowledge, busies himself with seeking knowledge. Allah did not burden you with following up on the people. He is an innovator. He is a facet. He is this. He is that. Yes, perhaps uh, the one saying these things has something in him worse than the one being criticized. Upon us is to fear Allah with regards to ourselves. Yes, Wallahu Ta'ala A'lam A'lam Wa Sallallahu Wa Sallam Ala Nabiya No Muhammad. So Imam Fozan also answered by clearly showing that the youth should not be caught up in these things. Busy yourself with ilm. If you say you follow the ulama, then why is it you leave off this important thing of keeping quiet with your tongue and being patient with Ahl Sunnah? Why do you go against what the, your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? That if you don't have any khair, then li yasmut. Then be quiet if you don't have anything good. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, leave that which doesn't concern you. But why are we so involved in every issue? every new issue that's been translated for us because a lot of us don't even know Arabic and we're involved in these these issues that are way across the the seven seas but we're in, deeply involved in it splitting splitting marriages and households because of this stuff Wallahu Mr. listen to what Imam Fozan uh, is saying here and he mentions he says we advise you with having taqwa law and continuing and seeking knowledge and being eager in doing so and acting upon what Allah taught you and calling to Allah and teaching the people what you have learned and abandoning the bickering that is taking place among the students. The bickering, insulting, and sowing seeds of discord such that they split apart the ummah and split apart the students saying beware of so-and-so, do not sit with so-and-so, do not read to so-and-so. This is not allowed. If so-and-so has made a mistake, you advise him privately. As for spreading among the people and to warn against him while he is an alim or a student or a righteous man, though he has made a mistake, then this spreading is not required. Verily, those who like that, the crime of illegal sexual intercourse should be propagated amongst those who believe they will have a painful torment in this world and in the hereafter, and Allah knows, and you know not. That's a statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, fi kitabihi al -kareem. What is obligatory is for the Muslims to advise each other. What is obligatory is mutual love between the Muslims, and especially the students, and especially with the ulama, respecting the ulama, not recommending some of them and warning against some of them. This is the reason for much evil, and the reason for bickering and hating, and a reason for fitna. Avoid these matters, jazakum Allah khairan, and be as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, the saying of Allah, who said, and verily this is your religion, is one religion. And Allah, and, and do not, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not be like those who split apart and differed after the clear signs came to them, and as they who have a painful torment. 
Be eager towards achieving harmony. Be eager towards advising one another. Be eager towards cooperating upon righteousness and taqwa. And beware of what will split apart the Muslims, especially in this time. The Muslims now are in need of coming together and are in need of cutting off argumentation between them and are in need of cooperating upon righteousness and taqwa and do not be helpers of the enemy in dispersing the Muslims and dividing the Muslims. If splitting takes place with the ulama and the students, who will be left for the ummah? So the Sheikh had beautiful advice and it continues, but we'll stop there. And it just goes to show that should, that should suffice us. If we are really following the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf, and we're following the ulama as we claim with our tongues, then let's begin to practice action and control your tongues. Don't speak about people so quickly, especially students, especially students who are known for Salafiyah, known for the Da'wah to Kitab wa Sunnah. And then you see something, a mistake from them. Yeah, you will see mistakes. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to continue to make mistakes. But don't be quick to take them off the Sunnah. And even if you get a fatwa from one of the ulama, that doesn't mean that that person's off the Sunnah. But yet, these things take dirasa because the haq is the haq. And it, as I believe it was Imam Malik said, la yu'raf al-haq bi rijal wa lakin yu'raf al-rijal bil haq. We don't know the truth by men. So it doesn't mean Sheikh so-and-so or Sheikh so-and-so or Dai so-and-so or Mektaba so-and-so or this website so-and-so said that this is the haq. But we know, the, we know these men and these websites and everything, are they adhering to the haq? And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself to Shaitan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.